If you want to tangle with fickle, hard-to-hook trout, you need to be pulling soft plastic grubs. If you want to get into grub trolling, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and grab one of Kel Kellogg's Signature Series Grub Kits today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. Maybe that's got something to do with the lack of hits this morning. I don't believe in that old superstition, but uh, just the same, I am going to eat this banana and uh, dispose of the peel and uh, we'll see if the fishing turns around. You never know, fishermen, we're superstitious and uh, sometimes when you're not getting hit, you'll even go to superstitions you don't really believe in, just, just hoping to get something to go. So we'll see what happens. Tell me what you think down in the comments. I've got a pretty good story about bananas on a fishing boat. This story takes place in up in Alaska in the Cook Inlet. I'm out on a boat and at, at this point I'd been to Alaska several times. I'd caught a whole bunch of Pacific halibut both in the Cook Inlet and outside. Um, I'd caught fish up to like 110 pounds. So I, I pretty much knew what I was doing when it came to halibut fishing at that point. And I, I kind of knew the quirks and nuances of the halibut bite up there. For example, when the current is really flowing, you know, you can catch fish then and you can catch big fish then, but the best time to fish is during that hour to 90 minutes when the tides are changing and the current really dies. That's when the halibut really feed and that's the best time to hook a really big halibut. So we're out there and the current's ripping and I'm kind of going through the motions because it's important that you save your strength for that slack tide period because like I say, that's when the big fish bite and you don't want to give a big fish any slack or anything. You want to have your A game going on when the big fish are biting, which is at that slack tide period. So I've got a banana with me and man, I got a guy in the boat that he is, he is banana phobic and he is dogging me. He's like, you got to throw that banana in. You got to get rid of that. It's killing us. That's why we're not catching any fish. It's his first time in Alaska. Why we weren't catching any fish or not many fish, we we're catching a few small fish, was the fact that the current was blowing along at like four knots. That's why we weren't catching fish. We were using four and six pound weights and uh, you know, just a tough go when the current's blowing like that. So when I see the current starting to slow down and, and I know from fishing with Captain Steve Smith and other guys up there that when you get in that slack tide period, the halibut are very voracious. They'll hit almost anything, they'll hit jigs. They'll hit spoons. They'll hit a bare hook. Problem is, is that bite window doesn't last very long. So when I started to see the, the tide slowing down, I broke out my banana. I slowly ate my banana and the tide slowing down even more. And uh, when it was really starting to really ebb out, I reeled in my line and I took that banana peel and I hooked it on my big old 60 knot circle hook. That's what you use. Typically we're using salmon heads or you know big chunks of herring, but that's what we're using for bait. And uh, I dropped that banana peel down there. We're fishing about 150 feet of water. Felt the sinker hit the bottom and you know, periodically you lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. And I get that telltale tap, tap, tap of a halibut. That's how they bite. Get, get in position. Let that halibut take the bait and then you just slowly reel that circle hook into him. Well, I start cranking and the rod, man, it loads up. I just slowly crank the fish in. I don't know, 50, 60 pound halibut, beautiful fish, biggest fish of the day. So once the fish is in the boat and in the box, I said, I says to the guy, I says, see, bananas are not a curse on a fishing boat. He looks at me and he says, well, if you didn't have that banana, that would have been an even bigger fish. <laughs> so he believed in the banana superstition. But the thing is, the thing I'll say is I don't believe in the banana superstition, okay? But, and I, I don't think it has anything to do with fishing success. But if you believe in it, it's going to shake your confidence if you have a banana on the boat. And that's going to cause you not to pay really good attention to detail. You're not going to fish as hard as you could. So... I think a lot of the superstitions around baseball or around golf or around fishing, it comes down to affecting your mental game. It affects your performance. That banana doesn't affect the fish at all, but if it affects your performance, you got to get rid of that banana. You got to get it off the boat because 
it, it's just not gonna help you. There's nothing inherently bad about the banana, but uh, man, if it shakes your mental game, you are done. You're just not gonna, you're just not gonna do that well, whether you're trying to hit golf balls, baseballs, hook halibut, hook trout, whatever it is, you want to have your mental A game on. You want to be fishing with a high level of confidence. So get rid of anything that shakes your confidence and load the boat with stuff that makes you feel confident. That's my advice to you. Now, if you're looking for gear that is absolutely not affected by bananas, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com. We will hook you up with what you need for the fall trout season. You'll be smiling. The fish, they'll be frowning because they're gonna be on the end of your line. You're gonna be yelling fish on. I guarantee it. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do. And you'll always know when I'm on here talking about fishing, golfing, fruit salad, whatever it is. I'm Kel Kellogg. You have a great day and I'll see you soon.